This is the worst structural collapse I've ever been to in, in, in my 36 years in the emergency services. And um, it, it's not a site that you, you want to hopefully ever see again. But we can't choose what calls we get sent to and, and, and what we've got to attend to. So we, we've got to go and do it. And um, for the younger guys that haven't had that experience, it, it can be a bit overwhelming. Um, if, 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 you, if, you're not, if you arrive there in, in, in the, 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 the incorrect mindset and, and, and the, the wrong attitude, it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hamper you. But if you go there with the attitude that you, you're here to provide a service, that's all you want to do to um, save a life, to, to, to bring closure to a family, whatever the, 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 the instance is, um, it, it just, um, how can I put it? It, 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 it just creates the purpose of you responding to that incident to assist. And basically it's rendering a, a humanitarian service to, to your community. It, it was amazing when, when we got there and um, when you got there, you got welcomed as a, a fresh set of eyes, a fresh pair of arms and legs, and um, somebody to, to, to relieve the guys that had been working tirelessly to that point. Um, being a, I wouldn't say a small community, a tight-knit community of emergency, fire, rescue, police, um, you, you, you greeted when you arrive there and you're in uniform, you've got your gear, your protective clothing, you, you get welcomed. And um, automatically you just slot in. You, you see a lot of familiar faces from previous incidents, from being on training with other departments, etc. So you, you already feel a warm welcome because you know you're going there and you're going to be assisting as part of a team and that you, you're going to be making a difference. When, when, when we, we arrived on scene, um, you, you go through what's called a check-in process. Obviously the incident commander that was aware because we had been uh, request to respond to the incident. Uh, it was myself and a team of five firefighters that went. Um, they did ask specifically for rescue qualifications, people that are rescue technicians have got experience, qualifications in search and rescue, urban search and rescue, specifically um, collapse, confined space, trench rescue type of thing. And um, we, we selected people off the shift to, to, to accompany me to the incident. And when we got there, we checked in. Um, I was identified as one of the team leaders for one of the sections. I was responsible for uh, Bravo section. And that was my area. And I reported directly from there to the incident commander. The team was not, my team was not specifically just from fire because when we got there, we got broken into different teams. They would put two or three rescue technicians per sector firefighters per sector, people that were lookouts, safety officers, spotters. Um, we got broken in, uh, we had uh, police search and rescue guys. There was search and rescue dogs assigned to us. Um, so you get broken into a multidisciplinary team of different agencies. And, and, and that's where you, throughout the years of, of experience, you learn to work with other agencies. Um, you're not there as a, a single entity, you're there as a collective with everybody to form part of the team and to render assistance in, in, in whatever way is required from you. By the time we got there, we were already into day, day four. And on day four, that, which, which was Friday morning, we, we arrived there at about half past six, quarter to seven. Went and identified, we attended the operational brief. They have what they call an operational period which is divided into 12 hour sessions. So for your first day, your day operational period is from seven in the morning till seven in the evening. And then from seven in the evening till seven the following morning is the night shift. So we, we responded and we assisted on the day shift, um, got broken into our groups, attended the operational briefing, what was expected, what the objectives were, and what uh, there's a safety message that gets given to everybody, um, the site layout, gets told to everybody where the, the, the restroom facilities, where your rehab. Rehab is your um, refreshments, uh, rehydration, etc. point. You get told where the tool staging area is, where the sectors are, where your safety zones, your hot zones are, and identify who the team leaders are. So if you do incur, incur a problem, you can speak to your team leader to bring to the attention of whoever to try and resolve that issue. 
but the 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 crux of the matter is when you get there it's not about your organization the other organization you're all there for one collective objective and that's to search and rescue and and, and get people out and when you've got a team of of guys that i was working with everybody was giving their input which which is important for 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 a team to function everybody's opinion counts everybody's idea to to reach that objective of getting the person out and, and i mean these are guys with with many many years experience um mr charles nevot walkie turner andre liederman fabian hoffman egnor brown monroe van nikerk greg clary uh, carlo clausen who's actually from mossel bay he works at the, the rescue base here in mossel bay basil Ma, mavukana rulo van staden Janu Mini from the District Fire Service and Devora Roberts. That was my immediate team that we had on doing the actual extrication. Well, I started many years ago in Gauteng Springs, worked at Benoni, and then I was at Santon Fire Department when Crystal Santon and became part of Greater Joburg. From there, I moved down to Cape Town. Um, I was at Stellenbosch Municipality and City of Cape Town. City of Cape Town, I, I was. Um, for the last couple of years, I was one of the, the, the training instructors at the training academy. And from there, I went to Neisner, and I've now been at Mossel Bay for the last three months. And um, training, formal training, experiential training throughout the years was invaluable. And that's from coaching, mentoring, learning, having an inquiring mind in the job. You, you have to, in, in, in this line of work, um, also do self-development when i say self-development you've got to want to learn more you've got to go and learn more and earlier years we didn't have google and things like everything was book knowledge and book knowledge you've got to then translate into practical knowledge and that is by taught to you at the training centers at going on courses um, studying further doing a lot of practical training and that's where you also meet a lot of the guys that don't work in your specific service or your specific town and that's where you start networking and you bump into each other two three years later and as if you saw each other yesterday so there's a unique brotherhood in the emergency services not only the fire department the emergency services as a whole and, and a mutual respect between the different disciplines and one can essentially not for um, exactly perform without the assistance of the others I had um, a, a three guys and, and, and a lady, a firefighter from Eden that were our, what we call our camera team. Um, the camera is like a it's, a, it's a search and rescue camera. It's on an extended pole, uh, similar to when you go, when you swallow the camera and, and it's, it's remote, the head is all remotely operated with a strong light, LED lights on the end, and they can put a speaker attachment to, to communicate. And every time that they'd opened up an area and we spotted voids, holes, they would go, we would call the team in, they would insert the camera to go and see where, what is, what is the voids looking like? What is it looking like under the slab, under the, 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 the areas? Are we able to get access into there? What, what is lying in our way? Is it electrical wires? Is it debris? Is it rebar? Is it, and um, the, 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 the rescue technician from Metro, was busy and I, because it was in my sector I was standing right next to him and he put the camera in and he said to us I can hear something suddenly you 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 get this uneasy excitement because is it just somebody in the background talking or what so we call for silence on the scene and when, when I say call for silence within two seconds everybody just stops what they're doing they freeze all machinery gets switched off no radio communication and the the gentleman jethro started calling into the into the void that we saw and when somebody answered back and we heard it the the level of excitement that was when, when we communicated on the radio we can hear somebody calling it was just it's it's an emotion you can't describe it's it's a wonderful feeling after five days being trapped under that rubble and somebody calling out help 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 and when we started talking and communicating it was unbelievable and then if, then then you step up into into high gear and things just fall into place um 
called the rest of my team in that was the, the rescue team on this they were sitting on the side and we got to work um, to to firstly try and pinpoint an accurate location where Mr. Gwembe was once we had uh, an overall idea of what location we we asked him to take a rock or a brick or something and strike on a wall and we were all walking around that area trying to pinpoint his location and we got pretty close because we started then by um, we identified more or less where he was so we started working our way through the slab with power tools jackhammers um, uh, core drills to try and put uh, get a camera close to him to see where he was trapped what was his trap what was the level of entrapment was he um, totally crushed or but he kept communicating with us and once we actually got the hole open which was uh, through teamwork time stood still the, a minute felt like an hour while you're busy doing that work and, and and the guys were just absolutely the team that i had was absolutely fantastic um and I'm, it, it, it wasn't a one man or two man effort it was a team effort from 10 to 15 of us all from different disciplines metro rescue fire rescue um, the police guys and once we got Mr. Dwembe out it, it, it was just yeah extremely emotional he was between the third and the second floor where he'd been tiling he was a tiler he'd been tiling there so that's where he'd been working when the incident happened and he got trapped in a little pocket a little void and to get him, we had to move quite a bit of concrete, quite a bit of reinforcing bar. Plus, once we got the, the, the opening to get the, the, the material between him and us out of the way so that we could finally extricate him. And um, there, were, there, there was medics on standby. Everybody was on standby because we did not know at that stage what condition he was in, what, what injuries he had sustained. Um, because the communication was it, it is a bit difficult when you've when you've got jackhammers going and you've got grinders and cutters and, and things going to try and make an access point for you to be able to get to the patient. The first word he said when we when we took him out and we put him on the stretcher was he just kept saying, God bless you guys, God bless you guys. That's all he said to us. And that was enough to trigger some emotions in certain people. I'm not gonna elaborate on that. And um, it, 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 it was like, yeah, took the wind out of our sails a bit, not, not, not in a bad way, but it just let you realize this is, this is a moment that you're not gonna forget ever mm -hmm. in your career. And, and it definitely is. As I say, I've been to many incidents, I've been to different types of incidents, but this one is gonna stick with me for the rest of my life. Okay, okay this, is, this is about day two of the incident, day two or three. You can see, um, as I spoke earlier, your, your incident command area there, that's the incident command vehicle belonging to George Fire and Rescue, um, one of the assisting vehicles from City of Cape Town. The, the, the area I'm, I'm, I'm showing now with the arrow, that is the area that the collapse occurred. That was the building. Um, this year became a staging area. Later they put up gazebos and tents. Uh, your rehab area was, was, was to, the, to the right here container with equipment from from uh, Worcester and the provincial government the ambulance are waiting any any people to be removed suddenly now on a site like this being that area you divide it up into sectors so the first sector was 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 alpha section then from there onwards to the back was bravo section and so on um, mr Gwenby was found about over there where the arrow is and this picture, yeah, I'd say 60% of that rubble that you see there was removed when we found him. Broken up and removed. And if, if, if you think about the height of a five-story building, a five-story building is approximately three floors. So you're looking at about a 20, high, 20 meter plus high building. Left, uh, turned into a, a pile of building rubble that size. Okay, take into consideration there is a basement, which is a further three meters down approximately. So all that used to be a five-story building. And it's come down there with, you can see 
There's one of the, 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 the floor slabs that had broken up as it had landed on the debris. Um, yeah, our res different rescue teams performing different functions, searching in certain areas. They probably got using the camera there to, to, to check voids and that for the victims. So on, on these two days, on the first two, three days, that's where they, they, they found and located most of the live victims, extricated them through, through by means of uh, having communication with the people, trying to locate them, breaking the concrete up around it and, 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 and removing it. Um, then on day four and five, they had the big excavators helping to move some of the heavy stuff away so that we can get to the further collapsed floors. And that's, that's generally it. Um, obviously, to, to the um, east of the, of the perimeter where the road came in, the, the, the police, law enforcement, traffic had cordoned off the area. Um, the provincial bus, I don't have a, an updated picture, uh, aerial photography, set up the big command post where you'll check in. Everybody that comes onto scene checks in, signs in, you get assigned to your, your, your team, your sector, and on departing afternoon you sign out mm -hmm. to make sure for a scene accountability so they can have records of who was on scene, mm -hmm. who did what, and then obviously in the, in the incident command they're keeping records, logs of what is going on when it is. Um, the, the biggest problem you get with, with, with scenes like this is people taking pictures with their cell phones and distributing them, I would say, I would call it illegally, of, because it could, the, the pictures could impact on people's dignity, on, on the poppy act, basically. And you want to protect those family members, you want to protect their family members of, of, of any further trauma. And, and so there's also a, a channel that the media gets, gets allowed in and out of this, this, uh, this type of incident and it all boils down to your incident command, incident command structure, what you put in place, how you put it in place. And we've all done training on incident command. That's how we, we, we have these formal practices to put in place. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the operation, the operational aspect, that is where you've got your technical guys, your guys that have got the knowledge, the equipment, and, and, and the years of experience of actually performing the function of rescue.